Welcome to Restoration Center's Midday Prayer with Dr. Thomas E. Keyes Jr. and Co-Pastor Simone Keyes. Thank you for taking the time and joining us today for Midday Prayer, every day at 12 noon. So sit back, take a moment, and enjoy the restoring power of the Word, because here, we are family. Now here's Pastor Keyes with today's Word. Good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to Midday Prayer. Glad to have everybody that's on Midday Prayer. Had a wonderful, had a wonderful time in worship. I want to thank all of you for being a part. Today is day 209 of, of, of praying, 209 days. That's just crazy, but God is good. A um, uh, couple of things I want to say, uh, and then we're going to let Cool Pastor read the list. We want to thank all of you for your prayers and your uh, condolences and all of these things. Um, uh, um, this morning, um, about 4 o'clock this morning, Stanley, uh, Colleen's son, Stanley Johnson Jr. passed. Uh, we want you to pray for our family. We want you to pray for Colleen, pray for Janelle, pray for the family. Um, um, he had he had complications. He had um, heart transplant over, I think, I, I don't even know. It seemed like forever. It had to be nine years ago. Uh, he's been doing fine and wonderful. He got... Uh, sick the other day and um, he went to the hospital yesterday. He coded two times yesterday uh, in the hospital and then this morning about four o'clock he passed. So I want to pray for them. Pray for our family. Keep us lifted up. Uh, kind of let us grieve a little bit today. So don't not a lot of calls today. Um, just kind of let them be. You can start calling and texting tomorrow uh, or whatever and we'll let you know um, daily. Uh, once the arrangements are made, as you know, we're living in the time of COVID. And so when you're dealing in COVID, um, I don't know how things going to go. I have no idea. Um, don't know. Uh, I have no idea. Um, Janelle, come in time when Janelle and Colleen start, decide to start making stuff, um, decisions, we'll let y'all know what's going on and we'll get back to y'all on what's going on. But just, just pray for us and lift us up. At this time, Co-Pastor is going to um, do our list and we're going to give you the word and pray and we're going to move on. Cope out. Hi, how you doing? We just want to do and, and we'll go. And as I said, I'll have on this back together, everybody. Just give me a chance. You don't want to say anything? You should? Sure? I'm positive. Okay, okay, okay. All right, let's get into this word. I'm in Psalms 40 and I was trying to, try, I try to limit it. I try to see certain things. Don't want to be on, I didn't preach this morning, but there's a couple of things I want to give you out of Psalms 40. Now, Psalms 40 and Psalms 41. I'm going to give you the background of Psalms 40 and 41 right quick. Um, remember, the Psalms are broken up into five different books. There's 150 songs, but there are five books. And so Psalms 40 and 41 are the last two Psalms in book one. Uh, we progressed. Um, it was interesting how yesterday we talked about death and, and Stanley died in the midst of death and how David talks about um, um, death being a vapor. Uh, is progressive. Psalms 40 and 41 are tied together. They are messianic psalms. They're psalms that were about the Messiah, um, uh, prophecies of the Messiah. They're psalms that were uh, quoted in the New Testament. Psalms 40 and 41, especially Psalms 40, is quoted all throughout the book of Hebrews. Um, this book, 40, Psalms 40 and 41, are these two psalms. Uh, were written, written while David was on the run from Absalom. If you notice, David wrote a lot <laughs> while running from, from people, um, while on the run from Absalom. Um, I want to do a couple of things, verse 1 and 2. might do 3 and 4. I think 1 and 2 will be enough. David said, I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. Um, the word patiently means he waited with expectation. Um, David said, I expected God. Uh, I waited with expectation for God to change my situation, and he heard my cry. When I yelled out to him, when I screamed out to God, God heard me, uh, and I expected for him to hear me, and I expected for him to bring me out. Um, the message, well, let, let's do it in different order. First of all, um, David, well, like I said, was on the run from Absalom, and so in the context of the text, he said, when I cried out unto the Lord, he heard me and he delivered me. Um, David didn't even deliver himself. God delivered him. Absalom was killed while riding his horse, and his hair got caught in the thicket of the trees, uh, and then um, one of David's generals came and pierced him in the pierced him in the heart and killed him. So it was God actually delivered him. David was like, uh, I expected God to deliver me and God delivered me. When I couldn't deliver myself, I couldn't give myself. 
myself out of the situation, but got me out of the messianic aspect of that. Uh, it gives us a picture of Jesus on the cross and cried out, God, my God, my God, why did thou forsake me? He said, when I cried out, I expected to deliver me and get what God brought him out. They brought him even get him off. Across the other that I come in the present with the Lord back, back in relationship with the and for us. And we did um was that um deal um storms and those on the west coast then with flyers everybody now with this COVID with the COVID is getting really real now. Dealing with it. What that's I mean, I can't wait I expect God to be in me. I'm expecting all I'm the set piece the middle of this that I waited. I expected God and when I cried out, he heard me in the living. And verse two he says, He brought me up out of the horrible pit. God have mercy. Um the the, the hard, hard, hard pit is translated um the tumultuous dungeon. He brought me up out of hell when he brought me out the dungeon, out of the miry clay. He set my feet upon a rock and established my goings. The rock is Jesus Christ. And he established, he made he made a way for me to get what I need to get. And so the mission to um to, 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 to um, dungeon and, he, and as it pertains to Pain of Absalom, it was gone out. Jesus, the agony on the cross, it was God that brought him out and set him on a rock. And for us, this is what I want to say today. Whatever you're going through, it is God that will bring you out. And it is God that will set you on a rock. And it was God and is God that will deliver you. Um, ladies and gentlemen, um, in my 50 years of living, I've learned that only God can bring out. Not mama, not dad, not grandma, not grandpa. Um, time. Time, they say time heals all wounds. I don't believe that. Time just make you able to deal with it. It don't heal it. It's still left. Um, but the reality is when you cry unto God, I don't know how he does it. When you cry unto him, he brings us out. And when Jesus cried, God brought him out. And when, when, when David cried, God brought him out. And when we cry, if we just call on him. Whosoever shall call, that's one of my favorite scriptures. Whosoever, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That word saved is the Greek word sozo. It literally means to bring us or deliver us from the penalty and the power of sin. He will bring us out, but we got to call. We got to cry. And today, I want to say to my family and to all of you that are, are grieving or going through whatever situation, cry out unto God and he will bring you out. What, the, the, listen. Don't don't call on people because people say they're going to show up. They won't show up. But if you call on God, he may not come when you want him, but he's always right on time. Co-pastor, you want to sing for us? At last and did my Savior bleed and did my sovereign die would he devote that sacred head for such a worm as I. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. You alright? Joking. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for all that you've done. We thank you for the opportunity to come before you and praise you and glorify you. And God, 
just like David cried out to you, we cry out unto you and we ask that you show up. Yes, God. Show up into this world of chaos and this world of of COVID and hurricanes and fires and tropical depressions and uh, police brutality yes, and, and this 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 world of, of, of marches and, and, and racism and this world um, where we're dying every day and in the midst of all of this I, I just ask that you show up. We need yes, you. God. We really, really need you. Yes, God. And God, right now, we, we pray, first of all, for all of these COVID cases yes, and all God. of these individuals. Continue to watch over them. Touch their bodies. We pray that they have life. Yes, we pray God. Um, that you'll just keep them. Um, give them breath back in their body. Those that are on respirators, oh God, allow them to come off and be able to breathe on their own again. Father, we once again, I pray for all of the doctors and all of the nurses and all of those individuals that are there. <laughs> yes, um, just watch over them. God, as always, I pray for President Trump and Please, President Jesus. Pence. Watch over them, the decisions that they must make. And all of our leaders, our senators and our governors and our mayors must make. Watch over them. God, this week as we go into yes, early God. voting, I pray that you watch over the voters. Glory God, God, thy kingdom come and thy Jesus. will be done when Jesus. it comes to voting. And now, God, I just pray. I pray for all of those that are under the sound of my voice. Because all of us are in situations yes, just like David. We're in a tumultuous dungeon. We have situations where it's just dark, it's bleak, it's hard. God, your word says if we call upon you, we shall be saved, we shall be delivered. Yes, God. And so, Jesus, we call upon you. We know that you're able. We know that you can. And, God, I just ask right now, once again, that you watch over Colleen, Janelle, the family, yes, and all of those that are dealing with this particular death. Uh, help us, oh God. Give us peace. I pray for my kids. I, I, I pray for Kenneth and, and, and Courtney. Yes, sir. Uh, all those that are just so close to him, yes, watch sir. over them and bless them. Um, I just I just pray, oh God, and, and I thank you for saving Stan. I thank you for watching over him. And God, now today, uh, as we go, we pray just watch, watch over us, keep us, and bless us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and Amen. thank God. Thank y'all so much for being a part yes, of God. Midday Prayer. We love y'all so much. As you hear Co-Pastor Cough and my voice is about shot, but God is good. We want to pray. Uh, continue to lift up our family as we um, as we um, um, deal with the death of Stanley. Um, just, just pray for us. Just lift us up uh, and, we, and everything is going to be alright. We're going to trust God in the midst of this situation and we love you see you tomorrow for 12 if we have any information we'll give it to you tomorrow we love you have a blessed day Co have a blessed day. just have a blessed day thank you so much for being on thank you so much <laughs> all right bye bye we love y'all <laughs>